Here we're going to look at a problem that was shortlisted for the 2009 International Math Olympiad. So it's question N2, so it comes from the number theory section. So let's look at the statement. We say that a natural number capital N is balanced if it's the product of an even number of not necessarily distinct primes. So notice that also includes the number one because that's a product of zero primes. Zero is an even number. Now, given A and B, which are natural numbers, we want to define the following quadratic polynomial P of X. That is X plus A times X plus B. And then the goal has two parts. First, we want to show that there exist distinct A and B, which are natural numbers, such that P1 all the way up to P50. In other words, when you evaluate this polynomial at 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 50, the output is always balanced. And then finally, we want to show that if P of N is balanced for all natural numbers N, then A has to be equal to B. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys some hints so you can maybe try the problem a little bit before we see the solution. So the first hint is to use the pigeonhole principle. And the second hint is that the number 50 is not important. We could, in fact, replace the number 50 with any natural number and we could prove a similar result. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean this up and then we'll look at a solution. So hopefully you made some headway with those hints and now let's look at the solution. So the first important observation to make is that there's some multiplicative property among these balanced numbers. In other words, if M and N are both balanced or unbalanced, then m times n is balanced. Now, let's maybe see why that works. So let's say that m is a product of r primes, and then let's, no, let's say that n is a product of s primes. Well, then that means that m times n is a product of r plus s primes. So let's go ahead and note that here. So r plus s different prime numbers. And then all that we really need to notice here is that if r and s are even, then r plus s is even, which is the condition of being balanced. And if r and s are odd, then r plus s is even. Because an odd number plus an odd number is an even number. Similarly, if exactly one of um, m and n are balanced, so for instance, if m is balanced and n is unbalanced, or vice versa, then m times n is unbalanced. Great, so that's maybe something important to notice as we move into the rest of the solution. Now that we've explored the multiplicative behavior between balanced and unbalanced numbers, I wanna dig into what we really want to show. So let's recall that p of x is this quadratic polynomial which, which has been factored, and we wanna show that all of the values of this quadratic polynomial are balanced, for inputs one to 50. So let's just look at that. So notice that P of one is equal to one plus A times one plus B. P of two is equal to two plus A times two plus B, all the way down to P of 50 is equal to 50 plus A times 50 plus B. So what we saw on the last board is that a product of two terms is balanced if and only if both of the components of that product are balanced or both of the components of that product are unbalanced. So that means for all 50 of these products, we need both terms in each of the pairs to be either balanced or unbalanced. So maybe let's see if we can write that down carefully. So we need n plus a and n plus b to both be balanced or unbalanced for n 
going from one to 50. And now notice that sameness just has to occur within each of the, these pairs. So it's possible that one plus A and one plus B would both be balanced, but two plus A and two plus B would both be unbalanced. And then maybe 50 plus A and 50 plus B are both balanced, but something in the middle like 31 plus A and 31 plus B are both unbalanced. All we need is for each of these pairs to both have the same property of being balanced or unbalanced. Okay, so now it looks like this solution is gonna be pretty wordy, so I wanna introduce some notation that'll cut down on the wordiness. And that notation is by the way of some function. So I'm gonna define this function from the natural numbers to the set containing zero, one, and it's defined in the following way. So we'll say f of k is equal to zero if k is balanced, and let's say it's one if k is unbalanced. Now we wanna define a set built out of this function that we can use with the pigeonhole principle. So we'll call that set A, and that's made up of all of these 50 tuples of the following form. So it'll be f of n plus one, f of n plus two, all the way up to f of n plus 50, as n runs over all natural numbers. Now we wanna notice that since this function f takes only values zero and one, this set A lies naturally as a subset of the Cartesian product of 50 copies of the set zero, one. So let's go ahead and write that down. This is a subset of zero, one, and I'll just put to the 50th power here. Great. And so now what that tells us is that the number of elements in A is less than or equal to the number of elements in the set containing zero or one to the 50, but that's easy to see that that is equal to two to the 50. And we can see that because each of the entries only take on the value zero and one, and we have 50 such choices. Okay, but the important thing to notice here is we can choose A and B from any natural number, and it's pretty clear that two to the 50 is less than infinity, which is the size of the natural numbers. So what that means is by the pigeonhole principle, there exists A not equal to B, such that F of um, A plus K is equal to F of B plus K for all K equals one up to 50. Great. So in other words, A plus K and B plus K are either both balanced or both unbalanced for K equals one to 50, but that's exactly what we wanted to show. Okay, so I'm gonna clean up the board and then we're gonna do the last couple steps of this first part. So let's see where we were. We define this function F, which tells us whether a natu natural number is balanced or unbalanced. So we say its output is zero if the input is balanced and its output is one if the input is unbalanced. Then we noticed that if we take this 50 tuple of F of N plus one all the way up to F of N plus 50 as N ranges over all natural numbers, the size of this set was less than or equal to two to the 50, but two to the 50 is not infinite, but the size of the natural numbers is infinite. So then by the pigeonhole principles, there exists A which is not equal to B, such that this 50 tuple here, F of A plus one, all the way up to F of A plus 50, is the same thing as this 50 tuple here, F of B plus one, all the way up to F of B plus 50. In other words, A plus K and B plus K are either both balanced or both unbalanced for K equals one, two, three, all the way up to 50. So in other words, F of A plus one, F of B plus one are either both zero or both one. If they're both zero, then these two numbers are both balanced. If they're both one, then those two numbers are both unbalanced. And so now we are essentially done and we'll just finish this first part off by noticing that P of K is equal to A plus K times B plus K is balanced because A plus K and B plus K are either both balanced 
or unbalanced for one less than or equal to k, less than or equal to 50, which is exactly what we wanted to show for this first part. Okay, so I'll go ahead and clean this up and we'll get looking at the second part of this problem. Okay, so now let's look at the second part. So we wanna show that if P of N is balanced for all natural numbers N, then A is equal to B. So let's see how we can do that. We're gonna prove this by way of contradiction. So let's suppose that A is not equal to B and without loss of generality, we can just say that A is less than B. So if A is less than B, then that, that tells us that B minus A is bigger than zero. So that's pretty clear. And now let's go ahead and take K naught to be the smallest natural number such that we have the following. K naught times B minus A minus A is bigger than zero. Okay, great. So that's always possible to do because B minus A is bigger than zero. So we can find a K naught that will multiply to this to make it larger than A, thus making this difference larger than zero. So it was important to do this because we wanted to construct a natural number because notice our condition is that for all natural numbers, the output of P is balanced. Okay, great. Now the next thing that we wanna do is take any little k, which is bigger than or equal to k naught, and then let's go ahead and set n equal to k times b minus a minus a, but notice that this is a natural number because it's bigger than the output of this thing right here because the little k is bigger than or equal to k naught. Now what we wanna do is look at what happens when we evaluate p at this value of n. So we'll do p of n, but notice that's p evaluated at this crazy thing that we've constructed, k times b minus a minus a, but notice that is equal to um, k times b minus a uh, minus a plus a, and then k times b minus a uh, minus a plus b. Great, because our polynomial is just x plus a times x plus b. But now notice that this simplifies a little bit. I can go ahead and cancel that minus a and then that plus a. And then notice that I can take this second term and write it as plus b minus a. And that makes it clear that we can factor a b minus a out of that second term here, leaving us with k plus one. Okay, so let's see what we have now. From this first term, we have k times b minus a. And then from the second term, we have k plus one times b minus a. So now putting that all together, we have k times k plus one times b minus a squared. But we know that this number is balanced and that's because this polynomial evaluated it, every natural number is balanced. But since b minus a squared is most definitely balanced because it's this perfect square, then that tells us that k and k plus one are either both balanced or both unbalanced. So let's go ahead and write that down. k and k plus one are both balanced or unbalanced. And that is for all k bigger than or equal to this k naught, which we have up here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the board and then we're gonna see why that is a problem. On the last board, we were working towards contradicting our assumption that a was not equal to b, and we took that a was bigger than b, and k naught was the smallest natural number such that k naught times b minus a minus a is bigger than zero we ended up showing that for all little k bigger than or equal to k naught, k and k plus one are both balanced or unbalanced. Notice this statement is true for all little k bigger than or equal to k naught. So what that tells me is that it's true for k naught. So in other words, k naught and k naught plus one are both balanced or unbalanced. But then k naught plus one and k naught plus two are both balanced or unbalanced. But then k naught plus two and k naught plus three are both balanced or unbalanced. So essentially what we've shown is that every number bigger than or equal to k naught has the same status of being balanced or unbalanced that k naught has. 
And so we can rewrite that in the following way. So for all k and l bigger than or equal to k naught, k and l are both balanced or both unbalanced. So, but let's see why that's a problem. So let's go ahead and notice that there exists a prime P, which is bigger than or equal to K naught. We know that that's true because there's an infinite number of primes. You can find a prime as large as you want, but this prime is unbalanced. Great. But let's notice what happens when we square this prime. Well, the square of that prime is most definitely also bigger than or equal to k naught. And this is balanced. So what we've done is we found two numbers bigger than or equal to k naught, one of which is balanced and one of which is unbalanced. So that contradicts this fact that we proved that every number past k naught has the same status of being balanced or unbalanced. But recall that that fact directly followed from our assumption that a was not equal to b. And so that's the contradiction that we've gotten is that we cannot have the possibility of a not being equal, equal to b. In other words, we have a equals b. Okay, so that's a good place to stop.